Hi, welcome back to our overview of how we roll the ever-evolving automobile tire, our exhibit on the history of tires, sponsored by Vredestein Tires. Uh, we looked at the early history of tires, solid rubber to pneumatic, uh, white tires to black tires, and now we're gonna look at some tires that we see today, uh, tires made specifically for electric cars. So here we have two tires made specifically for electric cars. We have one for an electric concept car and one for a car that did go into limited production. This is the Michelin Proxima RR, and this is one of the first tires made specifically for an electric car. Michelin designed and developed these for the GM EV1, the mid-90s uh, electric car made by General Motors. So this tire was specifically developed to run at very high PSI, the higher pressure. Uh, allows for the tire to not deform as much on the road, and so it has much lower rolling resistance. Uh, in electric car, you want, uh, obviously, like aerodynamics uh, to help it go further on a charge. Uh, you want less resistance to the tire rolling on the road. So one thing Michelin developed with the Proxima RR was this uh, soft coating on the inside of the tire. Uh, this is for self-sealing. This was so that the GM EV1 didn't have to carry a heavy spare. And indeed today, a lot of electric cars don't have spares. Uh, this was uh, pretty much a novel idea and uh, something that has uh, come to tires uh, today. Most tires have something uh, that allows them, uh, in the case of very minor punctures, to self-seal to help you uh, get someplace where you could change your tire. Despite all the advancements in tire technology in the past century and a half, uh, we still get flats and nobody likes changing a tire. In 2004, Michelin debuted this, the Tweel. This is a tire wheel combo that obviously doesn't use air. It uses these polyurethane uh, fins that are deformable and perform much like an air-filled tire. They haven't quite developed this for passenger tires yet, but these are available for uh, UTVs and other utility vehicles. So up here we have one of the coolest and maybe most famous tires ever made. It is the tire from the Lunar Roving Vehicle. Uh, these tires were developed to be very light. Uh, they obviously had to work in an environment with no atmosphere, uh, very little gravity. So uh, General Motors and Boeing actually teamed up to develop this tire uh, for the Lunar Rover. Uh, it uses a zinc coated piano wire mesh uh, there originally were some uh, aluminum structures inside to keep it sturdy and also a uh, tread also made out of aluminum that was kind of chevron shaped. Uh, this is an actual tire from the 1960s built by NASA and General Motors. Uh, it uh, was sort of a spare part, so it never made it to the moon. Uh, but these are the tires that are on the Lunar Rover, which is still up there. In front of it, we see a modern version. This is the uh, Goodyear Spring tire. Uh, with uh, the uh, NASA wanting to uh, revisit the moon and possibly go to Mars. There's going to be a whole host of new vehicles that are need to uh, traverse these uh, foreign bodies. And so NASA is uh, going back to the same idea they, they had in the 1960s with new materials. Uh, they uh, use uh, shape memory alloys, so when these tires deform, uh, the metal will bounce back to the original shape. And they also hope to uh, use this technology in road tires. So possibly one day uh, our cars will have uh, space tires on them. So why would you use metal mesh instead of rubber on a lunar tire? Well, first of all, it's a lot lighter than a rubber tire. Uh, you want to keep your payload weight down when you're going up into space. So these tires were uh, very light. Also, you don't want to get a flat tire on the moon. They didn't want to take lots of spares with them, uh, so an airless tire was important. They actually originally did develop some rubber tires, but pretty much early on in the process decided that they didn't want to go with pneumatic tires. They wanted to go with something airless, and uh, this is the design that won. So one fun fact, uh, General Motors and Boeing developed both the wheel and the tire. Uh, we didn't know really how thick lunar dust was. So with the uh, early versions of these tires, they actually had a handle on the wheel, just in case when you stepped out of the lunar rover, you uh, sunk into the uh, lunar dust up to your neck. You could then hold onto the handle and pull yourself out, almost like you were uh, climbing out of quicksand.
So here's a couple of really fun tires. Uh, these are two of my favorites. We talked about how originally tires were white, then they started adding carbon black, which made tires black. But what about other colors? How come we don't see purple tires or green tires? Uh, well, it seems that in the process of coloring rubber, uh, most colors fade pretty quickly. So there wasn't much point in making tires different colors. One company that did do it was uh, the Fisk Company, and they made this tire called the Fisk Red Top. And you'll see it actually has red tread. Uh, for whatever reason, the red dye didn't fade as quickly as other colors, and these were some of the most popular tires in the teens and 20s. And uh, Fisk kept making them even after carbon black became ubiquitous because people really loved the style of having a red tread on their tire. They were extremely distinctive. So here we have what's obviously one of the most spectacular tires ever built. This is the Goodyear Illuminated Tire. In the 1950s, Goodyear was looking for a way to simplify the tire manufacturing process. They came up with their own formula for polyurethane, which they called neothane. Uh, neothane could be just poured into a mold, and then out came a tire. It didn't need uh, any of the uh, cord reinforcement and obviously it was tubeless. Uh, so one aspect of neothane is that it's translucent. And Goodyear came up with the idea of adding 12 lights to the wheel inside the tire, which would illuminate the tire from within and created this uh, pretty cool effect. One idea that they had was that uh, uh, turn indicators would move to your tire. So your tire would blink instead of your uh, rear lights. Uh, so one thing Goodyear noticed was that they could color neothane any color they wanted. So uh, they came up with uh, a whole host of colors. You had orange ones, you had green ones, you had red ones. And uh, these were promoted extensively, but uh, never made it beyond the prototype stage because, like I said, neothane just wasn't a good material for tires. Color made a return to tire tread in the late 1990s with these, the Goodrich Scorcher. And uh, what Goodrich did was add these colored bands to the tread of the tire, and these were so that when you did a burnout, you would leave marks on the pavement, colored stripes down on the road. So as well as affecting the performance of a car, tires can do a lot to uh, affect the appearance of your car. They can be a fashion accessory, and tire manufacturers have come up with a lot of different looks for tires. In the 1950s, the U.S. Royal Company came up with these. These are the color wall tires. These featured a colored sidewall so that you could uh, coordinate your tire to the color of your car. They came in several different shades. Uh, in the very early 1900s, Goodyear had this uh, very unique uh, three-colored tire. You've got a white tread, a red stripe, and then a black sidewall. Uh, you've got different sidewall designs. Uh, as the 1960s came about, white walls be, uh, were reduced to thin stripes to sort of reflect the uh, new sleeker designs of cars. Uh, here we have an old style uh, white wall. This was built by Ford. Ford for a short period of time at the beginning of World War II had their own tire manufacturing facility. Uh, red stripes became very popular in the 1960s with uh, muscle cars. Uh, the red or sometimes blue stripe was a uh, sign of performance. And then, of course, one of the most popular things for performance tires and especially off-road tires were the raised white letters. Uh, this was a uh, pretty cool look that was uh, extremely popular in the 60s and 70s. Uh, the Radial SS was a Firestone tire from the 1970s, which featured this really unique, funky font that uh, is uh, very, very 1970s. So obviously new tires perform much better than old tires. Uh, they are much safer than old tires. Uh, tire technology has come a long way since those solid rubber tires that we saw at the very beginning of our video. A lot of tire manufacturers offer classic looking tires with modern technology, one of them being the Vredestein Sprint Classic, uh, which has modern treads, uh, uses modern synthetics in the rubber, uh, but has this kind of old school look. Uh, Coker Tire uh, does the same thing today. They remanufacture a lot of classic tire models, but using new technologies. Uh, you can get uh, white walls. You can even get uh, white tires for your uh, pre-war car. 
And uh, yeah, it's a great way of keeping your classic on the road. So that's how we roll the ever-evolving automobile tire, the history of the passenger car tire. Here at the end of the exhibit, we have this uh, interesting display case showing a, a range of cross sections from tires from the 1890s up until the 1970s. Uh, this pretty much shows you how tires have evolved from tiny little skinny tires to the wide steel belted radials we all use today. So thanks for watching our history of tires in a nutshell. I hope you had as much fun watching it as I did talking about tires. I do love tires. Uh, we couldn't get into everything. We didn't really talk about racing tires, which is a subject unto itself. Uh, but uh, please add what you know about tires in the comments. Uh, please subscribe to keep up to date on all our YouTube videos. And when you're in Los Angeles, come and visit us at the Peterson Automotive Museum. <music>